We thank God for his amazing grace. What a joy it is this morning to be able to speak a word on behalf of our God. I invite you this morning to open up your heart. God's got something to say to you this morning. And I hope it will give your life what you need in this moment. Come on, pray with me as we ask God to speak in this moment. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we thank you that you have ordered our steps into this space made sacred by our faith. And we ask now, God, that you would make the message available to those who gather here to be actualized in their lives as they deal with their challenges and their circumstances. Lord, we love you and we seek now to hear you speak to our hearts in the language of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> I want to, on this, I've been, I've been uh, escorted, prodded maybe, by this notion for some weeks that God is my default. God is my default. And I want to pivot this message out of a psalm, of the beginning verses of a powerful psalm that has been so reassuring in times of trouble. And it begins, God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not I fear, though the earth gives way, and though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. Let me tell you, I want to read that again because I want you to open up your Bible because what I have to say this morning is deeply deposited in this powerful passage. We'll open your Bible. Listen to me again. Psalm 46 verses 1 through 3. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, and though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble, and it's swelling. Hallelujah. The writer, the psalmist, clearly states that his backup, his refuge, his underpinning, his source of strength, his source of assurance, his default is his relationship with God. That's what I want to talk about this morning. God is my default. The, di the dictionary defines a default as it relates to pro computer programming, uh, the place where it goes, where the computer goes when there is no viable option, it goes to the default. The default is, um, the default is when you are struggling and you come to a place where you don't know where to go or what else to go, or how you're going to make it. And it's the place you fall back. It's the fallback place. And for people who are people of faith, people who trust God, it means that when I get into that tight corner and don't know how I'm going to move, God is my default. The other thing about a default is that it is, it is a pre-selected choice. You don't wait till you get into your trouble and try to come up with a default. The default is an automatic response. It kicks in. It's like a generator at your house and the storm comes and the power goes out. The automatic generators don't, you don't have to go put no switch, go nowhere. It just automatically kicks in. That's what a default is for, for, for the challenges of life. To have a relationship that kicks in without you. You know, sometimes your trouble's so hard you ain't got time to talk to nobody. You ain't even got time to talk to God. Troubles come up so quick. You need to be able to be in a relationship that is an automatic response to the challenges that come in your life. Like on the computer. When the computer shuts down, it automatically goes into default mode. And you and I need to live our lives in such a way. That's my first more point this morning. We need to live our lives so that when trouble comes, we don't have to negotiate a survival or somebody to pull us through. That we live in a relationship with God so that when things fall to pieces, that's what the psalmist says. He says, when the mountains give way, 
the earth shakes, when the waters are roaring, when there's trouble all around, he says, there's not a time to be negotiating what you're going to do. It ought to be already prearranged, the response. What, what's your fallback? Who's got your back? And I tell you, that's what it means to have a relationship with God. It means to have a fallback position that has already been prearranged because I'm already in relationship with God. You and I need to be in relationship with God. We need to be where God can get the benefit and the glory out of our lives and he will sustain us in our most difficult hours. That's what the psalmist says. God's my refuge and my strength. In other words, I'm going to do the best I can, but when, when things get bad, I ain't going to have to call. Hey, that good news that when you're in a relationship with God, you don't have to call God. You don't, have to, you don't need no time to talk to him. God automatically steps in. And you had a pre, your choice has been prearranged when you already said, I decided to follow Jesus. And as a result of that, he's my default. I hold on to him. This morning, if you don't have a default, and maybe somebody in here this morning who's, who's running their lives on their own, who's going it on their own senses, who's calculating their own journey. But what happens when things come in your life? They are beyond your capacity to navigate. Or when the decisions that you make are decisions that uh, end up being wrong decisions. Who, who covers you? Who, who covers you? Who, where's your cover? When things break down, when storms come, when pandemics show up, when bad health comes, when financial trouble comes into our lives, when our relationships crumble, when those we depended on are not there. What's, what's, who's your default? Where do you default to? I default to God. God's my default. I chose him, I, and I don't, have to, I don't have to give him any notice. Just like the generator switch, he comes on whenever I don't know where to go or what to do. That's the first thing I want to tell you this morning. Make sure you have a relationship with God that can be counted for, for you to fall back on. And God's got your back. The second thing I want to say to you is that uh, the psalmist, not only is he saying that God is his refuge and God is his backup, but he says that when calamity comes, God is the prearranged response to the challenges of life. What a calm it is to be able to live in the peace and knowledge of the authority of God's power to deliver us in our different, 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 deepest hour. That's what this, this, that's what the psalmist is saying. He says, when, you know, life goes to pieces. He said, the earth shakes, but he says, I, God is my refuge. In other words, it is a reminder to us that when these challenges that come in our lives to take our circumstances, we have the benefit of knowing that God's got our back. That's a calm. To live there, I, I, sometimes I wonder how people make it who don't have a relationship with God. They don't, they don't have this God who is there to assure them. That's what the scriptures are saying over and over again, both in the Old and New Testament, that God is available, that God will not abandon you, that God has the power to sustain you in your most difficult hour. God can keep you. This morning, somebody Sitting, listening to me this morning is caught in a situation where you need to develop a relationship where God becomes your default. So when life pushes you to the place, you throw up your hands, God's got your back and God carries you through the trials and tribulations. That's what the psalmist taught me. He says, he said, there's trouble. He said, he's talking about trouble. He says, he says the earth shakes. In, in the earth shake, that means everything shakes. That means, that means there's no place to run. When the earth shakes, when the ground shakes, when the ground shakes, there's no place to hide. You go to the tree and the trees are shaking. You go in outside and the ground is shaking. There's no place to go. He's talking about real calamity. When things go to pieces, when, when, you, when, you, when there's no vaccination for a virus that takes and captures the world, who's your backup? Who's carried you in this season of pandemic? God's. God's my default. I have to remind myself, and I want you to remind yourself this day, that you live, and if you live in relationship with God, you have a default. You have someone who will step in at the most difficult hour and pull you through. 
The third thing I want to say is that my default assures me that I can overcome fear. That's what the, the psalmist says. He says, who shall I fear? Fear, fear, fear is, 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 is threatening. But when you have a default, when there is a powerful reinforcement behind you, you know, fear doesn't conquer you because your faith overcomes fear. Your faith overcomes fear. I'm not saying that there have not been times in, in my own life where I've been afraid. But the, but the way through the fear has been the reminder and reassurance that I'm not alone. No, never alone. I'm reminding myself. That's what the default says. The default is saying, I am never alone. That's, that's what it means to have a default. I am never alone alone. I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But then I heard the voice of Jesus tell me, fight on. He promised, hallelujah, never, 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 never to leave me alone. That's what the default says. That in the face of fear, the psalmist says, I have God. God is my refuge. God is my default. I back up on him. And he picks me up. How many of us have not had times in our lives where we made the best decisions we could make and yet those decisions proved to be wrong and God stepped in. He defaulted. We defaulted to him and he stepped in and he brought us out of a bad decision that we had made. Nah, anybody there had ever made a bad decision? And God had to pull you out. Ha, hallelujah. God had to pull you out. That's what it means to have him as your backup, your default, is that he will he'll pull you out even when you make a bad decision. Well, that's very important, I think, in this, in this hour. There are so many people in our communities these days who are captured by the challenges of this pandemic this COVID-19, and in our community there are many who are hesitant to take the vaccinations. Hesitant either because of their preoccupied with unproven theories or either their own fears of what could and might happen. They're, they're, they're paralyzed to do what's in their best interest. And so those who are not taking the vaccine are really not fighting over science or culture. What they're really dealing with is their faith. You see, I cannot be sure that what's in that vaccine has everything I need or that it's the best decision. But when I use the best that's available to me, when I use science and I use experiences and I use the numbers of people who have already had the vaccination, when I take it, I do not take it simply because the doctor told me to take it. I take it because it is an expression of my faith that if I had made a mistake, hallelujah, God is my backup. I default to God. I make my decision with the best information I have and I know that whatever decision I make, I may fail, but I'm not worried about it because I believe that when I make a decision, God got my back. I default to God when I've been inadequate in my own preparation. So I challenge us this day to exercise our faith as it relates to the vaccination. Exercise our faith as it relates to the pandemic, knowing that when we have done our very best, God's got our back. I made my calculation. I could be wrong. But I am not making it on my, on my own. I'm making it in a calm assurance that God's got my back. You know, the issue of the vaccination, taking it or not, is really an issue, a question of faith. It boils down to it. Do you believe that God's got your back? Do you believe that if you do what you feel is right and know and the, the most available knowledge, do you believe that God's got you covered? And if you do, then you can take the shot by faith, by trusting God. 
by believing that God will bring you through. It is a test. It's a test of our faith. And so it is that I want to tell you that to be, to have the default of God means that when I have made some bad decisions, God comes through and salvages me. And God will do you the same way this morning. As you are dealing with life's challenges, not just the vaccination, but all the things that we have to deal with in life, career decisions, relationships, all the things that could be on the downside of our decision making. Ultimately, it's about trusting God to cover me. Trusting God to be there in the places where I failed and in my shortcomings. And I came to tell you that to have that kind of relationship with God where faith becomes the exercise of your decisions will give you peace in the midst of the storm. Faith is functioning in times of despair. That's what the psalmist is saying. God is my refuge. I, I put my faith in him. Oh, for a faith that will not shrink, that will not shrink, a faith that does not lessen. Oh, for a faith that will not shrink on the verge of any earthly foe. A faith that in darkness knows no doubt, in, in sorrow knows no fear. Lord, give me such a faith as this, that I may know my hallowed home. To live in the knowledge of God as default gives us assurance in the face of uncertainty. Assurance. As I said in the earlier part of this message, and I don't have to have no time, I may not have time to tell him to step in. He's, he's on default. He, he's automatic. He steps in automatically because of my relationship with him. I have assurance. It is a blessed assurance. As Fanny Cosby said, it was so powerfully. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of the spirit and washed in the blood. That's my story. That's, that's it. That's my default. This is my story. This is my story, praising the Savior all the day long. In good times and bad, in sunshine and rain, my assurance is that God's got my back and he will never forsake me. I'm falling back on him even when I'm moving forward on my own. If you're here today, I want you to trust God enough to make him the default of your failed and flawed decisions and know that his love will bring you out. And so if you have not given your life to Christ, I want to invite you right here and now to say yes to God's yes. I want to invite you right now to make God your default. Make it now, not after the trouble shows up. But decide right now that I'm depending on God as the psalmist. God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Though the mountains shake and the, and, the, and the waters roar, I am confident. I'm confident that God's got my back. He's my default choice. And he's got me. And God it's got you if you put your trust in him. I invite you to own him today because he's already owned you. Won't you pray with me? Oh, gracious God, we come in this moment to thank you for blessing us with the privilege, the privilege of worshiping. We thank you, God, for this message. We pray, God, that it will be sealed in the hearts of those who are struggling and trying to figure out and navigate their way through the difficulties of this season. Lord, move right now. May your anointing be on the heart of somebody here today, that they may be set free 
and become a part of the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. You can right now go on the chat, give us your information, call us. We'll respond. We have developed a capacity for you to be a member of this church without being physically present. We're building protocols for our virtual relationship so that you can be an active member of this congregation even though you live in another country, another state, another part of the world. Because the God we serve, hallelujah, one of the things we learned in this pandemic is not restricted by the spaces we occupy. He can meet us any place, any time. And I want you to know that God this morning. God bless you. Have a great day.